I'm Phil Cole, and our lab uses protein semisynthesis to study biological functions of post-translational modifications and their enzymatic regulation. In our two recent JAKS papers, we studied two enzymes that remove specific small functional groups from biomolecules, namely the deacylase sirtuin 6 and the phosphatase P10. Each project was a team effort of our postdocs and grad students, collaborators including Henning Lin, as well as undergrads that joined the lab as summer research trainees. The Farnham Lab uses a combination of biochemical, biophysical, and structural biology approaches to explore the intricate interface between transcription and chromatin. With significant advancements in electron microscopy over the past 10 years, we are now in a new golden era where we can now, for the first time, visualize many chromatin complexes, really enhancing our mechanistic comprehension of epigenetic processes. In a close-knit collaboration with the CoLab, we are pleased to apply our structural biology expertise to present a first-time visualization of sirtuin 6 bound to a nucleosome. Hi, I'm Zipen, and I'm very happy to introduce our current sirtuin 6 work with you. Sirtuin 6 is a member of the sirtuin family of uh, deacetylase that play critical roles in the regulation of metabolism, gene transcription, and genome stability. Our study of Sirtuin-6 started from the observation that Sirtuin-6 recognizes nucleosomes but not free histone proteins, although nucleosomes are composed from histone proteins and DNA. In order to understand how Sirtuin-6 recognizes nucleosomes, we need to capture Sirtuin-6 and nucleosomes in a stable complex. Multiple peptide and small molecule inhibitors of sirtuins are thiocarbonyls. These react with the NAD cofactor to form stable thioglycosides. Building on this chemistry, we used a combination of solid phase peptide synthesis and an enzyme catalyzed ligation to introduce a thiourea mimic of acetylysine at the site where we had observed the most rapid deacetylation kinetics. The thiourea was able to form a stable adduct with sirtuin with which we were able to obtain a structure. To better understand how SIRT6 recognizes its substrate, we determined the three-dimensional structure of SIRT6 bound to the nu nucleosome using cryo-EM. The structure reveals SIRT6 binds to the nucleosomal face by first recognizing a locally acidic region between the histones, H2A and H2B, termed the acidic patch. Using this acidic patch as an anchor, SIRT6 is able to move across the nucleosome face and interact with the DNA near the nucleosome entry site. In doing so, SIRT6 removes DNA off the histone surface, which allows the H3 tail to open up and rotate towards the active site of SIRT6, so that SIRT6 can properly deacetylate the lysine. This process is further enhanced by the H3 tail inserting into the nearby DNA minor groove, which helps ensure that the H3 tail is correctly positioned inside the SIRT6 active site. Hope our study of SIRT6 can facilitate the further understanding of its biological functions. Hello, I'm Rina, and I'm very happy to introduce our work in which we used protein semisynthesis to study the effects of ubiquitination on P10. P10 is a tumor suppressor protein, which is involved in the cellular signaling pathway of growth and survival. P10, like many other proteins, are regulated by post-translational modifications. However, studying the effects of these specific modifications is non-trivial because of the difficulties in preparing homogeneous samples of site-specifically modified proteins. In our approach, we semi-synthesized a closed mimic of ubiquitinated P10 using sequential express protein ligations of three components. We attached the ubiquitin through a sidechain cysteine coupled to aminoalanine at the 13th position. Using this semi-synthetic ubiquitinated P10 mimic, we performed biochemical analysis which suggested that P10, when ubiquitinated, has decreased association to the plasma membrane where its substrates are located and decreased activity towards its P3 substrate. We hope that our approach can guide future efforts towards uncovering the precise effects of ubiquitination on other complex proteins. Hi, my name is Bethany Dang. About two summers ago, I worked at Reina um, studying the ubiquitinated um, P10. Uh, it was probably one of the best research experience. Just being able to be in an environment with such a like supportive team, able to explain it in a way that me, an undergraduate student, could understand was, was probably one of the best experiences. I'm very proud to work with these great colleagues and of these Jack's papers, and I hope you enjoy them.